Here I want to do a couple problems involving gravitational potential and gravitational potential energy. Now, it was explained in a previous video that an object that's close to Earth has less potential energy than an object that's farther away from it. What we want to do now is we want to actually quantify how much energy a particle has in the space around Earth. Keep in mind that if the particle is as far away as it can possibly be from Earth, that's where it would have the most gravitational potential energy. And it would have less and less as we get closer to Earth. So let's just say, even though we know we can't get there in reality, when R approaches infinity, when the distance from Earth approaches infinity, that's when we have the most gravitational potential energy possible. We'd have the least gravitational potential energy possible on Earth's surface. So what is the formula that gives us numbers that we can use for gravitational potential energy? The formula is UG equals negative G times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the object in the space around Earth, which I'll call M2, divided by R, the distance between them. Now we can go ahead and calculate this gravitational potential energy if we know Earth's mass and the mass that is in the space around Earth. Sometimes though we don't know what the mass is but we still want to use a formula to calculate what it would be if the mass was there. And that idea is called gravitational potential. It has the letter big V in a very similar formula. It'll be G times the mass of the Earth divided by R and it's negative as well. And I'm going to go over the differences between these two ideas. There's a difference between gravitational potential and gravitational potential energy. All right, so why is gravitational potential useful? Well, the great thing about gravitational potential is you don't need to know the size of the mass that's in the field in order to have a meaningful value at any point in space. For example, sometimes we want to know what the gravitational potential is on the surface of Earth, and that's something we can calculate. Sometimes we want to know what the gravitational potential is a certain distance away from Earth, and this would be a concentric sphere. So I'll call this V at Earth's surface. And this could be V perhaps at the location of the moon's radius. And out here, perhaps way out at infinity, we could find V at R equals infinity. That one is kind of abstract to even draw. It's supposed to be infinitely far away, but you get the idea. Let's calculate the gravitational potential at Earth's surface just for a moment out of curiosity. The formula would be V at Earth's surface is negative g, so 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meters squared per kilogram squared. 
We need to multiply that by Earth's mass, 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And then we'll divide by the radius. Uh, Earth's radius would be approximately 6370,000 meters. And one difference here uh, between this formula and the acceleration formula is we don't square the denominator. Uh, let's see what that gives us. All right, so the potential at Earth's surface is negative 6.25 times 10 negative 6.25 times 10 to the 7, the units will be joules per kilogram. So if we write that out, it's a very large number. And it may not be understandable what the meaning of this value really is. So maybe we should calculate some other potentials as well. Uh, and then its meaning may become more clear. So let's find the gravitational potential at the location of the moon. Now you don't have to use the moon's mass in order to do this calculation. And in fact, we'll ignore the moon's mass itself. Uh, we'll find the V at the location of the moon relative to Earth. So um, it's going to be negative 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Uh, we'll do 5.97 times 10 to the 24. And we need a new distance now. Instead of using uh, 6,370,000 here, we're going to use 384,400,000. That would be the distance to the moon. Okay, let's see what we get. I get 1.04 negative times 10 to the six joules per kilogram. And if you write that out, it is approximately this. All right, so it's still kind of a large value. So it's not quite as negative as the previous value was. Let's try one more. And this one will be at R of infinity. Now notice the formula here is a division by R. Negative G times the mass of the Earth divided by R. But R is infinity which is a really, really large number, so large that it's infinitely large. What that means is even if we do put these numbers in, this value is going to be approximately zero. All right, so now can we make a graph of what the potential looks like at different positions um, around Earth? Here's what that graph would look like. When we're close to infinity, the gravitational potential is approximately zero. Then, as we get closer to the moon, it gets more and more negative. 
And so, by convention, we say that an object has zero joules per kilogram of energy when it's located at infinity. But as it gets closer, it has even less energy than it had out there. That's the idea behind the negative. It doesn't mean that the object doesn't have an ability to be accelerated by a field. It certainly does. But the point is that we had to give a number to infinity. And in order for things to work out well mathematically, we had to start with the convention that that was going to be designated as zero. All right, so what can we do with um, the gravitational potential? We can find the potential energy from it by using the formula UG equals M times VG, where M is the mass that's in the field. So let's go back to the original problem here. The original problem said that uh, there was going to be a spaceship, 23,300 kilograms. Uh, we want to know how much gravitational potential energy this spaceship has. So before I do that, first let's find out how much energy a one kilogram object would have. If we have a one kilogram object located at infinity, and that is a place we had said where the potential is zero joules per kilogram. then what will be the gravitational potential energy of that kilogram? According to the formula here, we would simply multiply the one kilogram times the zero joules per kilogram to realize that that object has zero joules of potential energy. So what if our one kilogram object was located here instead? This is a place where the gravitational potential is negative 1.04 times 10 to the 6 joules per kilogram. And we have one kilogram. So how much gravitational potential energy would it have here? Answer, negative 1.04 times 10 to the 6 joules. And that's our gravitational potential energy now. How much does the one kilogram object have here on Earth's surface? By those same principles, it would have negative 6.25 times 10 to the 7 joules. So you can see the pattern here. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to use this same uh, idea but for a 23,300 kilogram spaceship. All right, so let's let our mass in the field be 23,300 kilograms. We already know what the gravitational potential is going to be at the moon's location. So we just want to use the formula m times v, 23,300 kilograms, times negative 1.04, times 10 to the 6 joules per kilogram. OK. I get negative 2.41 times 10 to the 10 joules quite a large number in size. All right, now what is all of this used for? The next step in all this is to find what is called delta u. 
we can have an initial gravitational potential energy. Uh, so let's say our object here is located at the moon. There's our spaceship. Uh, then it would have an initial gravitational potential energy of 2.41 times 10 to the 10 joules. And let's give it a final gravitational potential energy. Where should it go? How about we want to escape? Let's say we want to escape Earth's gravitational field completely. So we already went from Earth to the moon. But let's say we want to go farther. We want to get out to r equals infinity, let's say. How much gravitational potential energy would the spaceship have out there? Zero, right? So what we can do now is we can find delta ug, which is a change in gravitational potential energy. So we'll do ugf minus ugi. And we'll subtract them to And we get uh, positive 2.41 times 10 to the 10 joules. So what does this represent? Well, it represents the energy that you would have to put into a spaceship in order to allow it to escape Earth's gravitational field. You see, if the ship has 2.41 times 10 to the 10 joules less energy here than it does out at infinity, then you have to put that energy back in somehow. You could do it by physically pushing, and this is just an analogy here, you could push that ship all the way out to infinity. But we don't do it with our hands, of course. We could do it instead with rocket propulsion. How much energy will it take to get it out there? 2.41 times 10 to the 10 joules.